Hey guys, now in this video, let's understand the code of our Azure function app in Visual Studio. See guys, till now we created our Azure function app in Visual Studio and we have deployed it in Azure portal. But we have not gone through the code of it yet. So in this video, we will discuss what is trigger. So basically, we will understand what is this HTTP trigger. See guys, there are additional triggers as well. So for example, service bus trigger, timer trigger, event hub trigger. So we will discuss these triggers in our upcoming videos. But as of now, we will discuss what is this HTTP trigger and where exactly in the code we have specified it. Now in simple words, consider HTTP triggered Azure function is API. And till now we have created Azure function which is nothing but HTTP trigger Azure function only. That is it is API. Then we will quickly understand how we can change the route of our Azure function that is API. See guys, we may need to change the route to make it more meaningful and we will understand this by adding a new function. Then we will discuss this local settings.json file. So we will understand what it is and why we have it. And finally, we will discuss the folder structure of our Azure function app and we will also discuss the typical clean architecture of our Azure function app. See guys, at this point, even if you don't understand this clean architecture, that's perfectly okay. You can simply ignore that. We will anyway discuss this clean architecture in detail in our upcoming videos. And now let's quickly understand HTTP trigger. So guys, we are in Visual Studio and this is our function app that is Azure Functions Demo and we have opened this function1.cs file. Now guys, this highlighted code, it is nothing but Azure function. And if you observe this, we have this HTTP trigger. See this highlighted code. So basically that means this Azure function gets executed whenever we hit that API or whenever we hit that URL. Let's actually try that. So let's run our project. And see guys, we have this API that is we have this URL. It's because we have this function which is triggered by this HTTP call. Okay. So obviously we can copy this URL and we can call it from browser or postman and yes it works and now let's understand how we can change the route of Azure function so let's try it by adding a new function so so guys first thing obviously we can add a new function by simply copying this code and then just duplicating over here and of course we can give new name to this function and obviously we can add our business logic or alternatively on this project right click i can say add and i can say new azure function so here it will add a new azure function in new.cs file okay so here i will say function 2.cs add and now what should be the trigger type and again it will be http trigger and see this we have this new function in new file right now let's give more meaningful name so i will say get all users now let's keep it just a gate call so let's remove post and here i will return herschel jane neil donut and now guys let's add a more meaningful route so here what i can say is after this get I can say comma and route is equal to user slash get all users right so let's simply save now let's run our project and now of course now we have two APIs that is two Azure functions and for this observe this route so this is the exact route which we specify right and of course now if we call this api that is if we hit this api it will return all the users and now let's discuss this local settings.json file so again guys in our function app let's open this local settings.json so basically in this file we can specify our app config settings so these are key value pairs 
and we can also provide our connection string so for example if our function app connects to sql database or azure storage account so those respective connection strings we can specify over here so again we can specify app, app config settings these are key value pairs so for example here i can say comma and let's say so guys this highlighted portion it can be my setting that is app config settings or let's say from our function app if you are calling some external service so we can also add over here so i can say some external service and then we can provide the url for that service so again these are config settings and then we can also add the connection strings as well so for example here i can say comma i can say connection strings and here i can say sql connection string and this is our sql connection string now is important thing these settings they are applicable for our local environment only when we deploy our function app in azure portal these settings do not get deployed so while deploying we have to explicitly create these settings in our function app in azure portal so guys please remember that so obviously in our next video we will work these settings and then we will understand how we can deploy it explicitly in our azure portal but again this is about the local settings file and finally let's quickly understand the folder structure and clean architecture of our azure function app and again if you don't understand this at this point that's okay you can simply ignore this so first thing this is our function app that is azure functions demo and if you observe we have function1.cs and function2.cs but in real time of course to these files we will provide more meaningful name right and if you open any one of these files see each of these file it contains the functions so obviously each such file can contain multiple functions so again in this function app we can have such multiple files and then each file can have multiple functions now how does a typical azure function app projects looks like that is what is a clean architecture so again guys if you don't understand simply ignore it so we have this function app project at the top and inside it we have multiple functions so for example function1.cs function2.cs and obviously in real time we will provide more meaningful names then we have models so for example user.cs so it will contain properties like let's say user id user name user age right and obviously this function it returns the information of the user right so for that we have service so we will have user service so this will be interface that is i user service that is it will be abstraction and then implementation of this interface it will be user service and then this user service it will actually fetch the user's information from this repository layer so again this will be folder see guys this functions models services repository these are folders okay and then we have this user repository service which will actually fetch the user from the database then it will return it to this user service and this user service it will return that user's information to this function and then this function it will return the user's information as a response so again this function it will call this user service this user service it will call this repository service so again guys this is really a high level introduction and we will discuss in detail in our upcoming videos so that's it guys for this video and now in our next video let's understand how we can deploy this config settings that is this highlighted settings in azure portal and then in our subsequent video we will understand how we can deploy connection string in azure portal so that's it guys thanks thanks for listening